All right, full disclosure, we meant to bring you this next story way back on March 13th. That date ring a bell to anyone? Yeah, that was the day Governor Little announced Idaho's first case of coronavirus. And it was a domino effect from there. Schools closed, concerts canceled, events and exhibits kaput. The State Historical Society was, one, was already at that time in the middle of its Idaho Women in Government uh, exhibit that was going on. Part of the year-long century celebration of women's suffrage. And if you missed it, like a lot of things these last six weeks, well, you missed it. Until now. We got in just before the shutdown shut it down. I feel so inspired by the women that are in this room. One woman in particular is Permille French. She was the first woman elected to the state superintendency of public instruction. Uh, she was originally from Idaho City, was educated there until about age 14 when she went to California, received a more formal education, and came back and really worked tirelessly to improve educational systems here in the state of Idaho. We have one photograph on exhibit that features the first three women legislators elected to the Idaho State House of Representatives in 1898. And what's remarkable about these three women is that they represented three of the four political parties that existed in the state of Idaho. The first woman who was appointed to the Idaho State Senate was Hattie Durr, and her work during the 1937-38 session followed in line with the work that her husband had done. She came into that appointment after Governor Brazilla Clark appointed her to fill the seat after her husband had passed. Many women have filled the position of state treasurer here in Idaho, but two women, mother-daughter, Marjorie and Ruth Moon, uh, come to mind as remarkable women. Marjorie Moon was actually the longest serving state treasurer at the time of her death in the 1980s. Nellie Klein Steenson was the first woman who was elected to the Idaho State Senate. Uh, she had also previously served in the Idaho House of Representatives. And I have a quote that I would like to share that she uh, really understood the work that she was doing as a politician and that women were doing as politicians uh, in Idaho. These women politicians may temporarily forsake the dust mop to wield a bigger broom, but all of them work hardest at being women in the best American tradition. They have found a bigger house to clean, and from the sheepish looks of the occasional legislator's face, bigger boys to stand in the corner. Well, there are other events planned all the way through the end of the year to celebrate women's suffrage here in Idaho. Will they actually happen? Uh, that's still kind of up in the air, though. You can check the Idaho Women 100 website, and there will be a link in this story at KTVB.com.